glory, glory to your name, oh God. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We magnify your name. We give you glory, 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 honor, and praise is due unto you. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. We boast in you and only you. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity to come into this place in space. Hallelujah. To give you glory, to come into this place in space and to magnify your name, to come into this place in space to, to learn more and to receive impartation, to have fellowship and communion. Hallelujah with you, O oh God. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity, Lord, hallelujah, to just go deeper into your word, to see what it is that your word is speaking to us. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah, and we give you glory, for it is a privilege, it is an honor, hallelujah, to, to uh, fellowship with you, to commune with you, to be intimate with you. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for this journey that we are on, a journey of a transformative faith, hallelujah, hallelujah, allowing Holy Spirit to do what only Holy Spirit can do, Hallelujah, to allow Holy Spirit <clears throat> to do what Jesus sent Holy Spirit here to do. And so we thank you, Father God, for transformation. We thank you, Father God, for hearts and minds, hallelujah, uh, ready to receive of you. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, for the fire that is burning within us, oh God. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, even for the pruning that is taking place in our hearts, oh God. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, that as we put on the mind of Christ that our minds are are being renewed and transformed. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for this journey, oh God, that we are taking with you, that you are taking us, Father, to higher heights and deeper depths, hallelujah, that you are revealing Christ to us through your word, Lord, because of his sacrifice, because of where we are seated in Christ Jesus. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for you revealing even greater the works of Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the person that you sent here, hallelujah, to, to comfort us and to lead us, to guide us, to be our counselor, to reveal truth to us. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, and we don't take it lightly, oh God, hallelujah, that we are intentional, oh God, about coming into this place and space. We are intentional about looking at the scripture. We are intentional, hallelujah, about the devotion. We are intentional, Father, about meditating on the word. We are intentional, oh God, about reflecting the work that you are doing in us and through us, Father. And so we thank you today. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God. Glory to your name. We thank you. Hallelujah. For you strengthening us, we thank you. Glory to your name. <clears throat> For you preparing us, we thank you, Lord, that we have ears to hear what you are saying to us. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That as we seek your face, hallelujah, that we become more and more like you, that as we seek your face, glory to your name, that we are being transformed into your image and likeness, that as we seek your face, hallelujah, we are 
becoming more of your glory carriers as we seek your face, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We see our reflection, my God. Hallelujah. We see our reflection. Glory to your name. <clears throat> the image and the likeness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our original design. Hallelujah. We see ourselves, oh God. Mm. Glory to your name. In all of the glory and splendor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As being salt and light in the earth. Hallelujah. As those that carry your glory. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the reflection that we see. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And if what we see does not al align to who you have called <clears throat> and created us to be. Hallelujah. That we we repent. That we we have a change of mind. Glory to your name. We change our mind to see ourselves as you have created us. To see ourselves as you have made us. To see ourselves as those who are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. We see ourselves as you see us, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory to your name, oh God. Mm. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. <laughs> we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. We give you glory, we give you glory, and we worship you. Hallelujah, we worship you. Hallelujah, we praise you, oh God. Hallelujah, we exalt your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We exalt your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah, we exalt your name. Glory, 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 glory. Mm. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for you, for you meeting us here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For when we came into this Zoom that you were already here. Hallelujah. And for that, we say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That we welcome Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Welcome Holy Spirit. Move by your power. Hallelujah. Glory to your name that we submit this time to you and we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. You know what each of us stand in need of. And so we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Touch our hearts and our minds on tonight. Hallelujah. And allow us to see mm, what heaven has already written, glory. Allow us to see mm, what the Father has already spoken. Mm. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, oh God. Bless your name. We bless your name. 
We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We thank you, oh God. We praise you. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We worship you. In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Have your way on tonight, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you in advance for all that you shall do in all that shall be spoken. And we bless you. We praise you and we honor you. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Sister Sherry. He is doing some pruning. Hallelujah. He is doing some pruning in our lives. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we are on day six, day six, and tonight we are going to be talking about the spirit of adoption, the spirit of adoption. Our focus scripture is Romans chapter eight, verse 15, um, but we're going to start at verse 12, and this passage of scripture talks about the Holy Spirit's ministries the Holy Spirit's ministries. For our daily devotion, um, we pray for a deeper understanding and experience of your identity as God's child, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal what it means to live as an heir of God's kingdom, embracing the spirit of adoption. For our meditation, we're going to reflect on the intimate relationship we have with God through the Holy Spirit, which allows us to call him Father, hallelujah, glory to your name. So starting at verse 12, and this is the CSB that I'm reading out of, it says, so then brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh, because if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all those led by God's spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children, also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. My, 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 my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What a passage of scripture uh, that this is. Um, when we talk about the spirit of adoption and being um, under the control of the spirit, meaning that we're under control when we allow him to be in control. Hallelujah. And so the most important implication of the fact of the spirit's control is that we are assured of being made children of God. And this idea comes um, from um, or as a conclusion to one thought 
and an introduction to the next. Um, Paul concludes his words about freedom from control of the sin nature by saying that we have an obligation to put to death the misdeeds of the body. That's our obligation, to put to death the misdeeds of the body. Why? Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And when we look at the fact of sonship, the sonship of believers, this leads Paul into the next major section on the security of the believer in the new way of the spirit. We have a security. When something is, is secure, that means that it's it's protected. That means that it, it can't be it can't be lost. Now, Paul begins by saying that believers are under no obligation, but not to the sinful nature. So again, our obligation is going to always be to the spirit. Always be to the spirit. Why? Because we as believers, we are indwelled by the spirit. And so our spirit has been regenerated by the spirit, meaning Holy Spirit or God's spirit. And that our body will be resurrected from the dead by the spirit. And so this puts us under an obligation to put to death the misdeeds of the body. So what, what believer um, understanding the implications of the presence of the spirit that Paul has just enumerated can feel the slightest freedom to indulge the sinful nature or the sinful desires of the flesh. So the obligation that we have is a holy obligation. Mm. And if we do not put to death the misdeeds of our body, it's a sign that no obligation to do so is felt. Meaning that the, 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 this is a, a lack of the presence of the spirit. Which ultimately is a sign that you will die or you will perish. Now, this is not about a, a lose your salvation verse or, you know, when we talk about putting to death the deeds of the flesh and you will live, indulge in the deeds of the flesh and you will die. But this is a big picture. This is looking at the big picture. This is indicating what should be the natural outcome in the life of one who has the presence of the spirit. We've been talking about fruit. Fruit don't lie. Fruit cannot lie. And so we have an obligation to be holy. We have an obligation to manifest our sanctification in righteous behavior. So it's it's time out for um, not standing on truth of the cost and the price and what it means for us to be believers, what it means for us to be holy, what it means for us to understand that we have the spirit of adoption, what it means to be free in Christ, what does it mean to be a new creature? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the obligation to practice Righteousness that is consistent with our spiritual position. See, it's a spiritual position that we have and we have an obligation to practice righteousness. And this is a clear call in the New Testament. Romans 6, 13. Romans chapter 6, verse 13. It says, do not offer parts of your body to sin. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. 
Colossians 3, verse 5. Put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. So even the passions and desires of our sinful nature, we have to look at what are, what is this passion? What is this desire that I have? Is, is it from my sinful nature? And if it is, we have to put it to death. Mark chapter 9, verses 43 through 47. And it talks about if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Now we know that that is uh, metaphoric. But back then, that's what they did. And so we have to be mindful, again, to guard our gates. Guard our gates. Guard those areas where the enemy can come in or our inner me can come in and cause us to operate in our sinful nature. Now, the most compelling reason why we... Uh, our call to live lives of holiness is because we have been adopted into a holy house, a holy household, a holy household. It's a holy household because those who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. We are the sons of God. Hmm. And so what Paul is saying, Paul is saying that that way is to enter wholeheartedly into fellowship with the Father. This is about fellowship with the Father, who is holy. Who is holy. Now, how many believers today and genuine believers <laughs> in whom the spirit dwells are not putting to death the misdeeds of the body. And that's something we can ask ourselves personally. Am I putting to death the misdeeds of the body? How many are living on the edge of the family of God? Living on the edge, on the circumference, not in the center, but on the edge. Just walk in the door, but then still stand at the door because you walk, you're still walking in and out the door. Hmm. How many... Stand on the edge and never take the steps to move into close fellowship with the father and his other sons and daughters. And so for those who have lived or have been living a rough and an undisciplined life and is suddenly thrust into the presence of mannered and dignified people, there is an instant obligation for most people to correct their behavior. And it is the same when we move into intimate relations with the family of God, beginning first with the father and then with his children. And so we have to ask ourselves that if we have issues with 
people, then we have to begin to question our relationship with the Father because that will automatically bring us into that fellowship and those intimate relationships with each other. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so those professing believers who fuel the polls, which make the church more like the world than like Jesus Christ, have missed an important obligation. And that is the obligation to put to death the misdeeds of the body. It is an obligation that is easy to miss on the outskirts. Why? Because you never come, come, come in. You never go out to the deep. And also, it's because you miss the table of fellowship. When we are in fellowship with one another, when we are com in com communion with one another, it it's easy for us to, to have those conversations. It's, it's easy for us to, to, to open up. It is, it's easy for us to confess our faults one to another. But as long as we stand on the outskirts, we're missing out on so much. We're missing out on so much. And so even Paul's hint at sonship is now exploded into its full glory by the apostle in the final of his three freedoms. Three freedoms. Freedom from the fear of separation from God. So when we begin to enjoy the role of being an heir, the insecurities which fed our fleshly disposition, it begins to disappear. And not only just that, but also the misdeeds of the body disappears with them. So there is a new way of, uh, a, a new way. There is freedom from this fear of abandonment. And Holy Spirit is testifying here that we will forever be the children of God. And Paul declares that Believers are the children of God in whom there should, there should be no fear. There should be no fear. So what is the fear that Paul says has been removed by the presence of the Spirit of God? Hmm. Oftentimes people fear losing what has provided their identity for a significant period of time. Mm -hmm. So just like a former smoker has to learn, my God, what to do with his or her hands when they're nervous instead of firing up a cigarette or if they're in a social setting. So the new believer fears a new relationship as a child of God. Why? Because there actually is a void that is left by the absence of sin. But that void is filled by Holy Spirit. And it is filled by the works of righteousness in time. It comes over in time. But there is an initial fear. There is an initial fear. If we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. And I'm not going to go into all of those, but I'm going to read this one. I'm sorry, uh, chapter 2, verse 12. It says, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. 
Do non-believers, those who have the spirit of the world, live in the fear of God and of the unknown? Actually, they do in their heart of hearts. They fear death. They feel hell. They feel judgment. They feel uh, fear eternity. They fear punishment. Not to mention that they also fear tomorrow and what it might take from them. Hmm. We don't find fear being talked about on the talk shows and these reality um, TV shows. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't find it being discussed, but you will find it being covered up. How? Into materialism, sex, substance abuse, depression, and other denial orientated dispositions or diversions. They're diversions. They're, they're diverting from the truth. So we, when we as the children of God, when we recognize their position, instead of being afraid of life in God, their eyes are open to what God has freely given them. So when our eyes are open, then we can see what God has, has already given to us, what's already ours. Even in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, instead of a spirit of fear, we have been given the Holy Spirit who is love, power, and self-discipline. So rather than us living in fear of life and what it may hold, the Holy Spirit's love, power, self-discipline through us gives us a whole new perspective on life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God doesn't give us gag gifts. Mm -mm. Mm. He gives us good gifts. Why? Because he's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Now, the best illustration that Paul gives us is that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of sonship. Also known as a, the spirit of adoption. Now, this word, when we look at the word adoption, it is what we call a Pauline metaphor, meaning that it's one that was common to him and the readers in Rome. And it was due to the, the uh, practice of adoption in the Roman Empire. So if we look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, Paul says that adoption is a sovereign act of God, the result of predestined pleasure and will. In Galatians chapter four, verses five through seven, he repeats much of what he has, what he says in the Roman text with one important addition. And he adds that we might receive the full rights of, of sons, the full rights of sons. And that is the heart of the spirit of adoption. That is the, the, the legal right of sonship that is held by natural sons. So one who is not a natural son that it is that is adopted by the father, they receive all of the rights. They receive every legal right of sonship that is held by nat natural sons. And so because the, the Jews rejected Jesus, it opened up the door for the Gentiles to receive the same legal right of sonship 
that they held. Hallelujah. And so he is made an heir of the father. He has given us equal standing with the father's natural progeny. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So the key in this, when we talk about the spirit of adoption, is that when we look at legal standing as a child of God, it's fully represented by Paul's adoption metaphor, which is Jesus Christ is God's only natural son. Mm -hmm. And believers are adopted into the family of God and made heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. It's Romans 8, 17. So as an adoption record is, is uh, in a court of law, it receives the stamp of approval. It, it receives a stamp it, it, or it could be a seal or a signature verifying its authenticity and validating the adoptee's rights from that day forward. So the believer is given a seal by God. And guess what our seal is? Our seal is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is given to every believer as a deposit guaranteeing that which is to come. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, it says, Having believed, Paul says, we are marked in Christ with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Even in Romans, Paul says that the Holy Spirit plays this unique role and the Holy Spirit testifies with the spirit of the believer that we are God's children. So Holy Spirit is testifying of us. Mm. Hallelujah. So it's by the presence and by the power of Holy Spirit that we call out to God in a very personal way. And we say, Abba, Father. It is the spirit that gives us this liberty in our spirit because we know from him that we are God's children. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so our heart, our heart, the heart of the child is, is linked to the heart of the father in permanent intimacy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we are not just a child of God. I want us to understand this. We are an heir of God. When we talk about being a child, that means that we we now have family. But being an heir means that I am included in the family forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Christ first told his father that he had given his disciples the glory that had been given to him. And that's in John 17, verse 22. And the purpose of that was so that um, the unity of believers with Christ might be evident to all the world. And that the Father's love, my God, for believers was, excuse me, was the same as his love for the Son. And then finally, Christ asked the Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. He wants his sons to be with him. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so Christ offers his own inheritance. He offers his glory with those whom the Father has given to him. Meaning that it, it wasn't just the disciples, but it is to all who would believe in him. Hmm. Now, the catch to this is that as co-heirs, we will share in the gl glory only to the manner in which the heir achieves glory. Hmm. And in the case of Christ, the way that he achieved glory was through suffering. And so if suffering is the son's portion, guess what? It is going to be the portion of the adopted co-heirs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If the son learned obedience <laughs> through suffering, so will the adopted sons learn obedience through suffering. Hallelujah. If the son carried around in his body the persecutions of the public, so will the adopted sons carry around in their body the persecutions of the public. Glory to God. If the son grew weak, on the persecutions without losing heart, so will we, the adopted sons. Hallelujah. That's our call to do likewise. It is conformity to the son that the adopted sons are gaining day by day as we are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we are called to share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody have any questions? Or any comments, I'm going to go ahead and open up the line. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good evening. Um, Good evening. This is, oh my goodness, tonight is fire. Um, to put to death the misdeeds of the body. That That is a powerful statement, so true. It is the obligation to the spirit. I don't know if I ever looked at it in that manner. So, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I just want to thank you. And yeah, thank you. This is good. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. It just reveals so much to us. You know, when we 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 go back and we revisit the foundational things. So thank you for sharing that, April. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And I'll just say ditto to what Sister April said. Um, that really caught my attention is our obligation to to do this. And and you also added it's our holy obligation to do these things. And it's just whew, this this is rich. Rich and now uh, I am too very grateful for being a part of the studies. It's it's very rare, very good. I'm I'm just enjoying it, enjoying it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that you would take the time out to do this. You know, I said, wow, this is this is awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. It's an honor, honor to serve. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Very Thank much. You. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Miss Bronda Grace, you have something to share on tonight? Mm -hmm. uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, I just want to say, um, I want to echo the sentiments of the other two ladies and say thank you um, for uh, uh, these studies that I've been participating in. Um, the The other two nights I had to uh, at the, the, the replay, you know, you uh, record uh, these studies. And so um, I'm appreciative of that because um, <clears throat> sometimes I, I like to journal and take notes and so uh if i think i've missed something i can always go back and yes. uh listen um make sure i understood um and so uh I, you know you were saying uh um watch what goes into our ears and what we you know look at but and I know social media has a big part of that, but social media also, um, in this case, um, uh, helps people. Um, Absolutely. You know, with um, uh, because you can, we can, because uh, you can get the word out um, also mm -hmm. on social media. So um, I just wanted to thank you for that. Um, that I'm that. Uh, uh, one that you record <laughs> so <Yeah>. on, the <laughs> <days> that, <laughs> on the days that I mean this um, I can yes. uh, go back but also I can go back and listen um, to the uh, recordings that um, uh, you know touch touch me so I can go back and make sure that um, mm -hmm. uh, get my notes and things like that because I do like to journal a lot journal when I journal, things just come to me and I just, you know, write them yes. down. So. That's um, awesome. That's all. Yeah, I just no, want to thank, thank you, you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for sharing. Um, that's just something I am I am adamant about is making sure that these are uh, recorded so that uh, we can go back and um, listen and continue to study and allow the Lord to, you know, just do what he's doing as we are reflecting and meditating um, upon the upon the word. So thank you for sharing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, close us out with um, prayer. Um, I tell you, this is, this is so, uh, so, 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 so good. Um, it's been a blessing even to me, you know, um, just going back into the word and uh, revisiting the foundational things. And so, hallelujah, Father, I just thank you on tonight um, for all that has been spoken, all that has been imparted all that has been released on tonight. I thank you, Lord, that your word um, has gone out and fallen on good ground, um, that the seeds that were planted today 
that they are are taking a deep root, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And as we are uh, continuing on this journey, um, Lord, we trust and and we believe um, the the transformative work um, that is taking place in our hearts and in our minds, oh God. And so we just thank you. We thank you on this evening. We thank you, Father, um, just for the movement of Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the, the understanding that we have, Lord, um, as uh, being called um, not just the children of God, hallelujah, but the sons of God, hallelujah, that even with um, becoming a new man, Hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That even as um, we are, um, are, are going through, uh, going through the word, Lord, that there is a work, Lord, that is happening, a work that is, uh, that is so transformative, that is taking place, and we don't take it for granted. We don't take it lightly, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so we thank you, Father God, for the shifting that is taking place on tonight. We thank you, Father God, for the role of Holy Spirit who brings power and part into our lives. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that we are not just the children of God, but that we are sons and co-heirs. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. We thank you, Father God, that there is no condemnation among us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, Lord, that we give our bodies to you through the spirit hallelujah as holy spirit indwells within us oh god in the name of jesus we thank you father god that we are those who live according hallelujah to the spirit lord that we live by the spirit and that we put to death every misdeed of our body that we will live we thank you father god hallelujah that when it comes to the control of sin that we have control of sin. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, because we have what it is that is on the inside of us, that we will just say no. Hallelujah. No to sin, that we have, Father God, Holy Spirit that is leading us and guiding us. Hallelujah. That is revealing to us. Hallelujah. That is speaking to us. Hallelujah. Yes or, or, or no, you may not want to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And so we just bless you on tonight. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that we have received the spirit of adoption, that we are sons and that we are co-heirs. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that we can approach you, hallelujah, in an intimate way and that we call you Abba Father. Hallelujah. Abba Father. Abba Father. That we are familiar with you, that we are intimate with you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. Glory to your name, Father. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that we will not fear, hallelujah, suffering, that we will not fear, hallelujah, struggle, oh God, in the name of Jesus, because as Christ has paid the price, as Christ, hallelujah, is the prelude to being glorified together with him. Glory to your name. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah, that he has already opened up the door and paved a way for us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to your name, oh God. Mm. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. We thank you for freedom, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we have been justified Hallelujah from death. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, oh God. To your name. We thank you, Father God, just for this time on tonight. We thank you, Father, that even as we leave this place and this space, but never from your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, give us sweet rest on tonight. Sweet rest. Hallelujah. Thank you. We bless you. We praise you and we honor you. We give you the glory. Give you the glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, love you, ladies. Say that again, Sister Sherry. No, I it wasn't. I didn't say anything. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I was just saying amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Amen. I knew I heard somebody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful, restful night. And Lord willing, we'll be back here. Same time. Amen. We love you Good too. Night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.